Okay, so to give you a demonstration of a function and a conditional statement, we're going to again use a label expression. And I like using label expressions for this because you can get a definition sort of for free. And what I mean by that is just by clicking a few buttons, it'll actually start writing the, the syntax of a definition for you and you can get started. So for this one, we're going to use Mafrock Buildings. And I'm going to bring up Mafrock Buildings Label Class Manager. It's already up, but just to be thorough, you would click on your layer and go to Labeling Properties. And it's already here. Now, if we look at Mafrock Buildings, you might remember from earlier in this video, it has this attribute field called building. And all it is telling you is that, yes, is it a building or is it a garage or something? So in terms of labeling, that's actually really not that useful. So what we'll do is we'll write a simple definition and then put a condition statement in the definition to change the label based on whatever value is in the building attribute table. So to do that, with the label class open, you start and click on this advanced button. And this is where you get the definition for free, as it were, as I call it. When you click on that, you can see that it puts the syntax in, def find label, and it's passing in an argument, and then it's returning back the label you want. And so now to demonstrate the concept of a conditional statement, we're just gonna type a little bit of code and we're going to type in if building, the value coming in. And here's an operator we haven't seen yet, but two equal signs checks the value of something as opposed to assignment. So we want to say if the value of building is literally, literally equal to the word yes or the string yes, Instead of returning back the name of the, the, um, the value that comes from the attribute field, we want to send back our own string. And we're going to send back Now you have to be very careful with Python. It's very finicky about indents and so forth. And um, so I have the highest level, the start of the statement, and then an indents down beginning. And then the if statement has its own line with a colon, then it checks what other, whatever's underneath that. And this is very important now what I do verify. So far, so good. And let me apply this. And if this works correctly, all the values that are of yes are actually going to label with the word unknown building type. Okay, and you can see now how certain buildings where that is drawn. I'll turn the OpenStreetMap base map off so you can see it a little clearer, but you can see that unknown building type. And of course, you can. Um, change the position of where the label is and so forth, because you can see it's overprinting. Um, it's outside the scope of what I'm, I'm doing in this video. But that's the key point here is I've wrote a function. It's sending in the value of a label. I'm checking what that value is. And based on the value, I'm sending back or returning my own particular string that I want to use for the label. And we'll see functions again in just a moment because they're also a very big part of the field calculator. Another basic idea in computer programming is the idea of iteration or looping. This is the idea of going through all of the objects in a list that you learned about earlier in these videos and doing some kind of operation on the current item that's being examined from within the list. Now, iteration comes in different forms depending on the type of iteration that's needed. So we'll first look at what's called a for loop. And then later, I'll show you an example of a while loop. So with a for loop, if we look at this code example, we can go through in verbose English and describe it as follows. We have a list of strings that are assigned to a variable called fc list. 
And for every item in FC list, print that item out. Now, an important thing here is to note, when it says for FC, the current item from the list is assigned a temporary variable and that's printed out. So this particular code would print A, then B, and then C. Now, a while loop is a little different, but the same general idea. This is where you iterate through until a condition is met. So if we walk through this code, we first start with a variable that's assigned to zero. And then we have a second variable that's the condition that has to be met until the loop stops. And with while loops, you have to be a little bit careful because sometimes if the condition is not met, the while loop can run forever and you have to do a hard stop of your program. So if we walk through the while loop, as we enter, the variable increment value is currently set to zero. And we print out to the command line what's happening in the code, or in this case, the, the increment's actual value. As we go through one cycle, we increase the value of increment value by one. So this loop will run three times until the value is met and the loop will be exited. And we'll now demonstrate this concept using ArcGIS Pro. Okay, let me give you a demonstration now of a while loop and we'll use the field calculator for this along with a script that I wrote ahead of time just to save a little time. So to set this up, what I'm gonna do is use this building shape file and I'm gonna create a new field and what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the number of vertices or points within each polygon. So I'm gonna create a new field called vert CNT for vertice count, and I'll leave it as a long. And now if I go to the new column, because it's a numeric data field that defaults to zero, I'm gonna right click and open up the field calculator. Yeah, I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it. And what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna load a script in and you can download this script. I'll put a link to it on in the video description where you can find this. So I load this in. And let's just talk about first what it's gonna do. So what's gonna happen here is the value of the vert count, vertice count field is gonna be equal to whatever value comes back out of this particular function. And this is very similar to what we saw with just a moment in the video when we had expressions for building labels same idea in terms of using Python code to calculate whatever value goes into a column. And you would do this when you have to do something more complicated. So what this code basically is gonna do, I'll give you the high level overview. It's going to go into each polygon, get its part. And these are all really single part polygons, so it's not that complicated. So it's gonna go into every polygon and then look at the number of vertices that make up that polygon shape and then return the count of those vertices and that count will then go into the value of the vert count field. And it uses a while loop to do that. So basically it first accesses the geometry and then goes into the geometry and loops until it no longer finds any vertex points within the shape. And when it finds that there are no more, it exits out of the while loop and return back the count. And while it's, I should have mentioned, while it's going through the loop, it's, it's incrementing the number of things it finds using what's called the plus equal operator, which basically just increments by one. So let's run this and watch what happens. So I loaded it in, I'll hit verify, make sure it's okay. Then hit apply and then watch what happens with all those zeros over there. So it ran pretty quick. So these various numbers, so what do these mean? 
if I pick one at random, like this one, number with a four, so you can see here, four vertices were found and I can confirm that it worked correctly. If I go to edit, modify, and then um, edit the vertices, you'll see that there's four of them listed. Now, you could expand upon this and get the X, Y coordinates of each point and so forth, but the point was to show you a while loop. A while loop will run through whatever process you want until some kind of condition is met. And that can be a really powerful tool for looping and doing fast calculations on data sets.